Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a just doing my makeup video. Uh, this is where I sit down and I just do my makeup and usually I have a chat to you guys about stuff. However, I've been in lockdown for like, I don't know, majority of the year. Um, and I don't really have much to talk about because, you know, I haven't been doing much. Um, so I asked you guys if you had any questions that you wanted answers to, and uh, apparently you do. <laughs> you, you got some, you got some questions that need answering. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer those today. I'm also gonna put this guy on my face. It is the Moonspell Volume Two palette from Luna Beauty. I'm not really gonna do like a review of this. I'm just gonna use it. And you guys can see how it applies. You can see what the color story is like there. I'll talk about it a little bit more in my monitoring my beauty purchases video later in the month. Um, but yeah, I don't. I just bought it because I was curious about it. I was like, mm, that looks. There looks like there's redundant shades in that palette, um, and the swatches don't look like they match some of the shades, and. Um, I want to try it for myself, so that's what I've done. I have used it. It's all right. Formula is good. That's you know not an issue. Um, but you know my my feelings about all palettes these days are either this is a piece of shit or it's all right. I also have this. Oi, you. This is a Pat McGrath Labs uh, intensifies artistry wand. This took over a month to arrive, so that's cool. I've tried this as well. I think I actually really like it. So there's that. Um, and I have the Refa Holiday Collection. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of it and show you something. Um, so actually, you know what? Let's talk about the Refa Holiday Collection now um, because then I can just use the brushes and don't have to like stop and start as I'm going so they have three yes three brush sets this year um, the first set is called the flagship eye set it includes six brushes you've got the number here we go number one two and three which are these guys here there and then you have the uh, is it 12 13 no 12 12, 15, and 29. Yes, 12, 15, and 29, which are these guys here. Um, so that's, you know, basically their top selling eye brushes. And then we have the flagship hooded eye set, which includes brushes one, two, and three. So, oh God, I've, I've done this well, haven't I? One, two, and three. And then we have brushes 13 and 14, plus brush 29, which is in the uh, first set as well. So there you go. Both sets, um, you know, designed for different eye types. The hooded eye set has the two smaller brushes in there. So I would actually say if you simply have small eyes, this set will do you good as well. So those two sets are $72 each. Um, they're usually $120, so there's a good saving there. But um, Refa have done something new this year, and don't worry, I haven't forgot the third set of brushes. I will get onto it in a sec. Um, they've done something new this year where they have created um, basically like makeup organization and storage so it's modular and magnetic so everything sort of clips together and there's a puppy running around so if you buy either of those eye sets you get one of these um, organizers so you can see it's modular there's two pieces and they just stick together so this particular duo which is the B component has a piece at the back which has like a divider in it and then it has what would be like a traditional like lipstick um, type of uh, like divider thingy set um, compartments compartments and then we have the holiday collection and that's where these guys come in so these are three of their newest brushes 
that will be um, sold together. This guy is 136 US dollars. So you have the minor dirty. If you're noticing, if you're like, why do they look discolored? They're dirty because I've been using them. Obviously, you guys know I love these brushes. So you have like a powder face type brush. That's the number 30. Then we have this guy, which is a foundation or cream brush. Uh, it's a number 31. And then this guy, which is basically the mini of this, is the 32. And if you have watched all of my brush content, you will probably know that uh, some of my favorite cream brushes come from another brand and they are similar to this. I really like this type of cut for applying um, cream products to the face. And these ones are really nice. I am gonna use them in the video. You can see how it applies stuff. I like them. Now, if you buy that face set, you also get this B component and you get two of these, which is the C component. So, uh, whoa, this should really be done on a flat surface. I am playing with fire right now. Um, so you can see how they just clip together. These guys, you know, you use them for palette storage. I'm sure you could think of other things to get in there as well. And there you go. It's super cool. There are more components. There's five in total. I'm going to put an image on the screen so you can see them all set up and like individually. And listen, I was not expecting to see this, ugh, this from Refa. I thought they would lean more into tools. Um, they did release their eyelash curler this year, which is really good. And that's coming from someone who hates traditional eyelash curlers because they scare me and I had a bad experience where I ripped all my eyelashes out when I was younger. Um, but I really like it. So my, my feelings are starting to change about traditional eyelash curlers, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I thought they would lean more into tools. I thought we might see stuff like, you know, spatulas and mixing palettes and stuff like that. Um, but no, I mean, you could consider these guys a tool for sure. Um, but it's left a field of where I thought they were going to go. And I'm not mad about it. And I love that it's black because, you know... Refer. I am going to leave an affiliate link down in the description box. Um, people always are like, oh, Refer are paying you. This is like sponsored content and you're not telling people about it. And why else is everyone talking about it? Um, everyone's talking about it because Refer are very generous and they send PR packages that are like friggin' Christmas. Um, and also they offer us affiliate links. So if we do make sales through our channel, we get a small cut of the sale. So yes, people are going to talk about them. Also, they're really good brushes and the people who are running the show are really nice and friendly. So it's not unusual that people would want to work with them. I want to work with them. I really like Refa. There's a fly in my room. Get out! Yeah, I really like Refa and I will continue to talk about them when they release new stuff. And like I said, I do have an affiliate link. If you don't want to use it, you can go directly to their website and you can still get the discount. Okay, let's get on to the makeup. I am just going to prep my eyes. I'm using MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I will use the Pat McGrath Primer, but uh, it's completely clear. So I need to like, I need to cover up some of this stuff. This skin. So the very very first question that I got um, and I got quite a few questions relating to this later on. Um, what are you looking forward to finally doing post lockdown? Um, some people also ask me like what's the first thing you're going to do when you come out of lockdown because it for us it's like it's upon us basically. Things start to open up um, from midnight tonight when I'm filming this um and in I think it's I think it's two weeks from now um we're gonna have shops open although I mean that might happen sooner I don't know um okay so oh, I'm not gonna lie I don't really want to talk about this it's gonna put me in a bad mood 
Um, but also I feel like, you know, I've had to tell my friends, I'm going to have to tell you guys as well because, um, you know, it's going to probably affect my content a little bit. Um, <clears throat> my mum still refuses to get vaccinated. So, um, I, by proxy, am sort of put in between a rock and a hard place where I also have to avoid going places because I don't want to bring COVID home to my mum. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of frustrating. Not kind of frustrating, actually. It is. It's completely fucking frustrating. It's stupid. Um... She is vaccine hesitant because she says she doesn't have confidence in the vaccine. I'm double vaxxed and have been for a while now. Um, so yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't, I, I mean, what can I say? What can I, there's nothing I can really say about it. There's nothing I can do about it. It's her choice. If she doesn't want to get it done, no one can force her. If I was legally allowed to dart gun her with the vaccine in her fucking sleep, I actually would. Um, so, yeah, I will probably, the first place I go will probably be the supermarket. Uh, <laughs> really exciting. Um, so, yeah, I've had to basically tell my friends, you know, like... If you invite me to something and I say no, you know why. Um, I've had to sit through countless conversations of people telling me, oh, but this is going to happen and do you know this? And Yes, I know, I know. I know all of the possibilities and all of the potentially bad things that can happen and I know that probably everyone is still going to fucking get COVID and... Like, the world is opening up, and that's the end of it, and eventually it's just going to burn through us all. Um, but also, it's not me that needs to be convinced. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of what I'm going through with that. Um, there's heaps of shit that I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Sydney to see my family. Um, and I, I mean, I can. I still can. The issue is that I don't live in a house where I can isolate from my mum. We share a bathroom. We share... The house is a fucking shoebox, right? It's a shoebox and three people live in it. So there's no way for me to um, avoid my mum, essentially. Uh, so, yeah. It does definitely make things difficult. But what can I do? What what can I do? I can't really afford to move out, so I just hope that mum will decide that she wants to get vaccinated when she realises that she can't go anywhere for months and months. All right, let's get into a happier question. Uh, some of you guys asked some very fun questions, and this was one of them. This was, this was from Love Michaela... Love Michaela V? Love Michaela Eve. Soz. <laughs> Reading. It's hard. She asked, full birth chart, please and thanks. So I'm not going to show you my full birth chart. Um, I will give you some information. So if you want to look it up yourself, you can. But I am going to limit that information because there are some things I like to keep to myself. Um, so I... <sighs> I was born 14th of November 1984. I'm not telling you where I was born or um, my time of birth because, you know, like I said, <laughs> some information, it's mine. I've done my birth chart before. I'm not going to lie though, like I'm shit at reading birth charts. So uh, there's that. And also, uh, listen, I'm going to say this about birth charts. They're super fun and they can be a little bit Oh, not a little bit. I think they can be quite insightful um, into helping to understand who you are and maybe even like why you do certain things. Um, but also, I think any like balanced person can read any birth chart and see a bit of themselves in it. So I don't take it like as full gospel but I do like to read them. I do have fun with it. Okay, Victor's Makeup asked, 
<laughs> what do I do when I have creative burnout? Mum, please help. Listen, I don't have any answers for this. Anything that I say is going to sound like those fucking stupid cliche articles that you read on the internet where they're like, you know, Ugh, creative burnout, meh, 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 unhelpful information, fucking just spouting the obvious shit you're already experiencing, blah, blah, blah. There's no actual answers in it though. And I don't, I honestly don't think there is a solution for burnout. Um, other than, like, completely remove the thing that's burning you out from your life so you can be free of it, essentially. Um, I mean, you can look at, like, what, what aspect of the thing is burning you out? Because sometimes it's not the whole thing. Sometimes it's, like, certain parts of it where you're just like, holy fuck, this is, like ruining a completely good thing for me um and if it if something like that is going on then I would look at like you know if it if you're talking about creative burnout in a work sense I would look at like are there certain things that I can give to someone else to deal with like the things that I feel like are burning me out can I give them to someone else for example, if you uh, run a business, I don't know, printing t-shirts with memes on them or something, um, and you love coming up with the memes and doing the designs and all that stuff, that's all fun. But when it comes to, um, I don't know, packing parcels, or it comes to uh, doing the accounting every week or every month or something like that, if they're the things that are like dragging you down and burning you out, can you give those jobs to someone else? Can you pay someone else to do those jobs? That is an easy fix. That's, you know, simple. Obviously, just give it to someone else. Hire someone to do it. But if you have creative burnout like around the actual part of being creative, then that, like, I don't have any answers for that, you know? Like... That is just, you need a break from it. It's like your brain and your body telling you that it's like overworked. So yeah, my advice would be like, look at what is burnt out. <laughs> like, you know, are you burnt out as a whole? Are you burnt out because of aspect A, B, C or D? Um, and then go from there but yeah I don't think there's any solution to burnout and I think once you're burnt out you're you always sort of maintain that burnout a little bit so it's shit burnout is really shit um I've heard people talk about it and it wasn't until I experienced it that I was like wow this is bad um I'm fucking burnt out with my family as well so I getcha I getcha um sharpest <laughs> Wow, this name, fantastic, sounds painful. Sharpest Dildos uh, asked recommendations for a 24-year-old with crow's feet. I don't know how you're going to feel about this answer, but I'm going to be honest. Fuck, man, I didn't want to have eyeshadow this big today. Um, I'm going to be honest. Get Botox get Botox. If you want something that actually works, that is actually going to smooth the lines and prevent you from creasing the muscles even more um, and the, the lines getting deeper and deeper as you age, get Botox. If you don't want to hear that and Botox isn't your thing or you can't afford it, I would say look at an eye cream. I would uh, look at a retinol eye cream. I would always wear sunglasses when you're outside. I would try not to smile with your eyes. Um, and yeah, I would basically just go with the resting bitch face because smile lines come from expression, especially like crow's feet. Are these eyes balanced? Not really. There's really not a solution for lines that is um, helpful outside of pretty drastic stuff. 
Uh, once you have them, they're only going to get worse over time. Obviously, you can do stuff like, you, you can use retinols and you can make sure you're hydrated and, you know, keep stress out of your life. Good luck with that. Um, eat well, exercise, all that stuff. Like, it does play a part in looking good and maintaining that youthfulness. But also, it's probably, like, the most difficult thing to maintain because life is fucking hectic. And especially the older you get, the worse life becomes hectic. You know, you've got more responsibilities and you've got bills to pay and you've got kids to look after and all this jazz pandemic to live through um so yeah i would say if you have the money and you're not opposed to it get botox and maintain a botox regime um if you can't afford that i would say get a retinol eye cream invest in a good pair of sunglasses um and get a hydrating eye cream as well. You can also get like a firming one. The one I use is from Good Molecules. It's the Yerba Mate one. Um, it's not like, don't get it twisted. It's not a miracle by any means. I put it on and my eyes look like maybe they're a bit firmer. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Um, most eye creams, I don't feel like they work though. Uh, so, you know, this is why I'm being very uh, cynical about the eye creams. I'd say if eye cream is the way that you want to go, you're just going to have to be prepared to put in a lot of time and effort of just testing out different eye creams and finding the one that works for you. Um, most don't work for me. The reason I mentioned the Good Molecules one is because I should be doing my fucking eyeshadow while I'm yapping. Um, the reason I mentioned the Good Molecules one is because I feel like it does work a little bit. Um, but yeah, most don't really do much of anything. Tyler Bell asked about my favourite movie or TV show and my favourite mobile app. I had a lot of people asking what my favourite movies are, my favourite TV shows, what I've been watching lately. Did I watch Squid Game? Um, okay, so yes, I did watch Squid Game. And, uh, I liked it. God, I watched it, I watched the dubbed version. Fucking hell, man. The dub, mm, it's so bad. The dub actors on Netflix are just fucking trash. Like, Netflix puts so much money into, um, creating these awesome TV series and movies, and... <clears throat> Then they cheap out on the dubbing actors and it's just trash. Um, so yeah, that kind of ruined it for me. I did think it was a good series, um, but uh, I don't know. It. I mean, I liked the premise of it, but I didn't find it as shocking as so many people claimed it was. I don't know. I thought the Saw movies were more shocking, more confronting, um, but yeah. I did enjoy it, and I would recommend it. I, I've actually recommended a few friends watch it because I thought it was quite entertaining. Other movies and stuff that I've watched recently, what I'm currently watching is um, Man in the High Tower on Amazon Prime, um, and that is fun. It's not fun. It's actually really fucking depressing. But I don't really want to give away. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, if we didn't win World War II, what would life look like? So, yeah, it's pretty um, confronting and depressing. Uh, so, there's that. It's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I also watched Made on Netflix, which I thought was really, really good. Um, what else have I watched recently? Oh, I need to open up Netflix because there's been a couple that I did enjoy. There was one, I think it was called, is it called Oats Studio? And it's basically, oh God, that's, it's kind of fucked up, but it's good. Is it called Oats Studio? Where is it? Yes, Oats Studio. So it's basically like a series of mini shows that only run for like a few minutes. Some, I think the longest one's like 12 minutes or something like that. Um, and... Yeah, some of them are crazy, like just fucking insane. Um, I also watched 
Midnight Mass. I really liked Midnight Mass. Um, it was good. <laughs> it was good. I would recommend that one. I'm eagerly awaiting um, The Witcher, like season two of The Witcher. I really wish they would just fucking hurry up with that. Um, <laughs> I think it comes out next year or in December. I did have someone ask me about the new Game of Thrones installment, Dance of Dragons, Dance with Dragons, whatever it is. I, I'm not sure if they're talking about the book or the series that's meant to be coming out next year. So there's going to be a series, um, House... The House of Dragons, I think it is, um, and it's about like the Targaryens. I'm very, very excited about that. And the book, I don't know, I haven't even like caught up on what's happening with the book, but I am really, really keen to um, get the next instalment in the book. Although in saying that, um, I've been, oh god, I've had like a book on my bedside table that I've been meaning to read for about two and a half years now I haven't picked it up once so I don't know I perhaps my reading days are over um <laughs> I used to read a lot but now I just I don't feel like I have time for it and when I do have free time I'm kind of like wanting to just zone out and watch a TV show or something like that so yeah um my favorite mobile app okay you guys ready to hear like my dirty little secret <laughs> um my favorite mobile app is actually a game and it is called Evermerge and I have been playing it pretty much since it came out and um i'm fucking obsessed with it i'm just putting it out there i'm like dead set obsessed with it i have loved it since the day it was released and well probably not the day it was released but i've loved it since the day i started playing it and i have played it consistently ever since i got it i think like over two years ago so you know there's there's that i love that game it's really fun Okay, people did ask for pet updates, so Freya's doing well, driving us all insane, um, as I would completely expect of like a, how old is she now, 10 months? Yeah, Bursto's in December. Cat is well, and uh, Burb is well as well. Um, yeah, all the pets are doing fine. Freya, we got Freya desexed, and... Uh, she had complications after the surgery. Surgery went fine, but she ended up getting an infection. She was, hey girl, do you know I'm talking about you? Hello. <laughs> oh, did you know I'm talking about you? Okay, no jumping, careful, no biting, fuck. So yeah, she got, oh, she licked me. She licked me good and proper. Um. <laughs> she got an infection and she wasn't healing well and that was a very stressful month <laughs> um we were at the vet like every second day having her dressing changed um you know taking out stitches and putting in staples uh so yeah but then the the last time I went to the vet so I went to the vet and this was the time before the last time and she was like look if it's not looking better when you come in again in two days um, I think we need to consider another surgery to take a look at why we're not getting the results that we want from the antibiotics and keeping shit clean um, and I was just like oh fuck, this is like a nightmare and I took her in two days later and she was like completely healed the vet because I'm not allowed to go in to the vet so we do everything over the phone and then I hand the dog over the vet called me and she's like I don't know what's happened but she's like completely healed she has the tiny tiny tiniest little scab on the main wound that was like the worst um but she's completely healed there's no signs of infection 
um, the wound has gone from being open to being closed um, and like you you can give her a bath you can take her to the dog park she can play with other dogs you can take her on extended walks again so yeah that was a bit of a tumultuous time um, but we got through it so you know that that's that's good sometimes you can't ask for much more other than just surviving a shitty scenario life with mrs clark said i live in the usa and supply chain issues are affecting availability of stuff are you experiencing the same here yes we are um i don't know hopefully things will get better but um i i noticed the other week i went to the supermarket and like i couldn't get mum's lactose free milk um and i think like if you have a dietary requirement, you might be the same as my mum where she likes what she likes and if I can't get the um, the one that she likes, then she's kind of like, well, I'll just go without because all of the others are shit. Uh, <laughs> so I feel bad for her with that. Um, I'm hoping it improves soon because it's pretty fucking annoying. Um, but I think, I think that's why, like, the government's just like, we're opening up because everyone's sick of this shit, um, and we've got to get the country back on its feet, so, yeah, um, I don't, I'm hoping that since we have the high vaccination rates that, um, you know, we'll sort of get over the hurdles of stuff like that but I, I mean only time will tell won't it so we will see um we also had australia post which is like our you know main postal service not shut down but they like stopped accepting parcels from businesses for a while because uh they had such a backlog of shit to deliver because obviously everyone's doing their um shopping online um so yeah that's you know that was fun not fun katie jade asked what my favorite candles are what my favorite snacks are how are the fur babies which i talked about um alexandra Beely Beely, yes alexandra Beely um asked what's my favorite scotch and how do i get rid of pests on my house plants i had a few questions about house plants too um okay so favorite scotch I wouldn't, I don't really have one. Is Canadian Club a Scotch? I don't really know. I do love a good Canadian Club and Dry. I had people asking me what uh, what my favourite cocktail was as well. Um, probably my friend Brian's Cosmopolitan. I love his Cosmos. They're just fucking fab. Otherwise, like, Moscato is probably just, like, my drink of choice. Um, yeah. I think, I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. I kind of drink, like, the same thing whenever I go out. If I go to a winery, I will try new stuff. I'll buy stuff to bring home and try. Um, but I find I'm always disappointed and it, it always tastes better when you're drunk and at a winery. So, you know, there's that. When it comes to favorite, okay, favorite snacks, I really like um, savory snacks. They are my favorite type of snack. I particularly like potato chips. Um, and when it comes to sweets, I prefer to drink my sugar rather than eat it. So I'm gonna choose a soft drink if I'm feeling like sugar. Uh, my favourite candles are definitely still glass house candles. I personally don't think anything compares to them. Although, and I know there's going to be some people who agree with me on this. So, you know, let's have this discussion. Let's throw this out there. Um, I feel like since they changed their wax, they're not as good. Which is a crying shame because they are beautiful candles. Uh, they were. Some of the candles are still really nice. But yeah. I don't know. 
if you feel that way as well let me know make me feel vindicated okay and plants so um how do i get rid of pests on my house plants i use mostly systemics so that is something that you like spray on the plant and you like or you feed it to the plant and it almost it's like it's like a vaccination it's like a vaccination so um when uh the bugs get on the plant if they're munching on the plant um they are essentially you know they're um taking up the uh systemic um stuff that you know kills them that's what i use because i find that the the bugs that i get of course they're the most difficult ones they're the most common ones um spider mites although i haven't had much of an issue with spider mites recently because um the product that i use works i use um oh, is it called dead red or red dead something like that um and it it's really good it it wipes out spider mites really well um and fucking mealy bugs i hate fucking mealy bugs i know how i got them and i'm like i'm still bitter about it i ended up i bought a very very expensive bundle of plants and um one of them had mealy bugs and it spread to a whole bunch of my other plants so yeah not happy with that um but it is what it is mealybugs are really hard to get rid of uh rose shield is a good one for mealybugs um again that's a systemic so when they you know chew on the plant they are uh, basically it's like you know snail bait or something like that um so yeah i use systemics i know a lot of people like to go the natural route with neem oil and stuff I'm not that person. I've tried it. I don't think it's effective. I don't want to be fucking spraying my plants every weekend with neem oil. Um, and it stinks to high heaven. And yeah, so no neem oil for me. Um, people like to use things like, um, you know, isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> Look, and for mealybugs, I will use isopropyl alcohol to initially clean the plant. Um, but they like to use blends, so like isopropyl alcohol and dishwashing liquid with some water. Um, and that can work, and that, you know, that's fine if you want to go for a more... I don't know if that's really natural, though, but it's fine if you want to do that. Um, I just... I want to use something that works, and I don't want to be having to spray half my fucking plant collection every weekend so i use systemics next question that's pretty much it asked anything on your wish list doesn't have to be makeup related okay yes there are some things so there is one thing that is on my wish list that's like beauty related um and i will buy it i just haven't done it like just yet um i kind of usually do like my online browsing at night because you know i'm trying to fucking work during the day get some shit done um and then i forget in the evening to do it so um i want the pharmacy holiday trio of the uh cleansing balms the three new mini scented ones um, oh, they're not really mini. They're 50, 50 grams, which is half the size of the full size. Um, I want those. That's pretty much all I want at the moment. Um, oh, someone did ask me what's better, the Shuamora Cleansing Balm or the Pharmacy... Sorry, Shuamora Cleansing Oil or the Pharmacy Balm. I like them both. Like, one is not better than the other. It just depends on what your preference is. Do you like an oil or do you like a balm? Um, I use both so and i will probably always use both so yeah the, i don't i really don't think one is better than the other um what was the question oh yeah <laughs> uh wish list so something that i'm thinking about buying myself for christmas is the bizzle like hardwood and tile um cleanse cleaning like vacuum <laughs> <laughs> words Haley. i don't know what it's called but it's essentially like a wet vacuum so when 
you are like you know cleaning a hardwood floor or a tiled floor you have to sweep it or vacuum it and then you have to mop it right this thing does that all in one um, and I've been considering buying it all year um, I think I even saw it like last year online maybe um, and I, I wish I'd just fucking bought it to be honest I, I was kind of grappling with the oh I really don't want to spend the money blah 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 um, but I think I'm gonna buy it because I fucking I hate the whole sweep and mop thing. To me, it feels like doing the same job twice because it basically is. Um, and yeah, I, I just can't, I can't stand it. So I really, I really want this thing and I'm thinking I might just buy it for myself because nobody else is going to fucking buy it for me. So it's gonna, it's gotta be me. Another thing that I'm thinking I will do and this will probably be next year sometime. Um, I think I might pull some money out of my savings, which I know will make me motherfucking cry, um, and just renovate the whole house because it's an absolute fucking shithole crap shack at the moment. It's just a mess. I mean, the house, when it was purchased, it needed... <laughs> To be fair, it probably needed to be gutted and renovated then, um, but that didn't happen. So yeah, I, I think it's just time. It's never, like, the house is never going to get better. It some Someone just has to decide that they're going to do something about it. That someone is obviously going to have to be me. Um, so I'm thinking I might just do it. The kitchen, my god. So in vlogs you guys have seen my kitchen. Um, our pantry is, for starters, we put an old bookshelf in the kitchen um, because we had nowhere else to put it and we haven't been able to get rid of it. Um, so that has sort of held some of our pantry goods. But it's like this ridiculous corner cabinet that's small and just oh my god like it's just an absolute fucking nightmare there's like you to get to the back of this cabinet i literally have to get down on all like my hands and knees and fucking crawl into this cupboard and also the uh the cabinet doors keep falling off so every time you open the door the cabinet door falls off i honestly like my kitchen at the moment to me feels like one of the seven circles of hell um, and that's like the frustration that I feel. So the kitchen's got to go. I want the kitchen to be completely gutted and redone because at this point it's like unusable and just an absolute hell hole. Like I want to burn it to the ground. I'm not even joking. I hate it so much. The house really is too small for us and I would love to move somewhere bigger and I think everyone who has been in lockdown for an extended period can probably relate to what I'm saying here. Like when you are literally stuck in your house every fucking day for months and months and months on end, um, you really do start to realise how small your space is and previously like it wasn't, you know, it it is what it is. Uh, you live in a small house and you just get on with it. Um, but yeah, it's been like this year, I've just been like, this house is so fucking small and I would love to move somewhere bigger, but um, I can't afford it. So there's that. Also, I don't really want to sell this house because this is the last house that I lived in with my dad. Um, so, you know, I, I just, also the location is fantastic and like, there's just so many reasons why I don't want to sell it. Um, so uh, yeah, there's, look one of those things I want to move but also I haven't come to terms with the fact that um, if I was to do that I would probably have to sell this place and I would probably uh, I mean I might even need to move out of Melbourne to afford somewhere else so yeah property prices are really high um, yeah it, look it's a thing it's a big complicated thing there's lots of shit that goes into it um, but I was thinking it might simply feel a little bit easier to live here if the house wasn't falling down around our fucking ears. Um, it, 
it might it might be nicer if it has a facelift which it's desperately in need of anyway um i want to get like new carpets I, the place needs to be painted so badly the paint that the people used to freshen up the place when they were selling it um i mean it's the ugliest color ever <laughs> So there's that. Liz Whispers asked, oh, I was just about to speak about you, Cheeky Muffin. Hello, Big Stretch. Uh, Liz Whispered, Whispers asked how Freya's leash training is going. Um, it sounds like you are uh, you're still hit and miss after three years. Yeah, look, um, I mean, she's all right. Initially, when we go out, she's really fucking excited. Which is fine, <laughs> I get it. Um, so yeah, she's a bit crazy initially, but she does, um, she calms down, she's pretty good. Uh, the halty collar really fucking helps. Um, stops me from being like fucking literally pulled over onto my ass, which is done several times. Um, she's getting really good at like walking around, well not around other dogs. Um, she's getting good with like when we're walking and she sees other dogs um, you know she's not like oh I must talk to that dog if I tell her basically no you know we're not talking to that dog because the owner of that dog is showing me signs that they don't want our dogs to talk to each other um, she's like oh all right then moving right along continue our walk so yeah no she's she's getting better I don't know if she's ever going to be the perfect dog on or off the leash, but we are working on it. I did have someone ask how her training is going with lockdown. I mean, it's not. I can't take her, so that's annoying. I can only do stuff at home with her um, because I'm like I'm a member of the German Shepherd Club um, of Victoria. They do send out weekly emails that. Uh, give us things to work on, which is good. Um, but yeah, uh, the, look, I feel like there's there's a lot of credit to be given to trainers who are sort of there and who can say, well, hold on, you're actually doing that incorrectly. Here's how you should do it. And that often leads to better results or if they see that your dog is simply not responding to that particular type of training um they can give you a completely different type to try they're like okay well your dog is just not interested in doing it that way but we can try it this way so i really miss that however i gotta give freya fucking an absolute shitload of credit she's very smart and she has a willingness to learn um so I really, like, I appreciate that from her. Um, she does her best. I do my best. It is what it is. Life is just not, you know, it's not ideal at the moment. Um, but we just get on with it. Emmy MJ asked, do you miss being a professional makeup artist? No, I don't. Um, so I left that profession because I just knew it was my time to let it go. Um, there's nothing stopping me from going back to it in the future. So, you know, there's that. But, um, no, I don't because I, I gave it up because it was, like, I knew it was just my time to, to move on and, um, give it up. So, no, I don't, I don't have any issues with, um, moving on from it. And you can see I still got to do makeup related things so you know I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything um it was a, a very like it was a cool job that I doing weddings is pretty like it's pretty special because I got to see many many moments that like other people don't get to see kind of like fly on the wall like and I think like my favorite favorite moments are when like dad sees the bride in their wedding dress for the first time or you know mum sees the bride in the wedding dress for the first time and when it's like just them and I'm in the room as well with no one else and just like quietly watching this moment it, it's really really beautiful um 
and I feel honored to have got to see that not only with some of my friends which was extremely special um, but also between like people uh, people I don't know just standard paying clients um, you know that that's very very special very special moments so I you know there are aspects of the job that I really loved um, and I would love to see again in the future but I don't miss it. Awaka906 said if you could use any one word for the rest of your life what would you choose and why? Um, <laughs> at this very moment in my life I would choose the word fuck um, or no <laughs> um, but if I if I could choose a phrase, it, it would have to be a phrase. Um, it would either be thank you or I love you. I would want to I would want to use one of those two. <gasps> Just threw my phone on the ground. Oh, I did have oh, I've got a fly in the room. Kill it. I did have someone ask um, if I were to be in any other profession, what would it be? I, I I have no idea. Like I just I don't know. I really I don't know. Like I would maybe go back to um, selling antiques, which was something that I did with my mum uh, many moons ago. That's a really interesting job. Like, you get to see some fucking cool shit. You get to meet some really interesting, eccentric, fun people with amazing stories to tell. Um, yeah, maybe I would go back to doing that. Um, and I mean, if it was... If we're going to say, like, you know, any job in the whole wide world, if you, like, were able to do it by some miracle, what would it be? I would totally be an astronaut and I would go to outer space. Happy Sabi said, I'd love to hear about your teeth journey. I've struggled myself my entire life and consider it. Okay, um, so I had Invisalign for a few years um, and then I got veneers. Um, as sort of like a finisher to, you know, really just perfect the work that I'd done. Now, uh, when I, you know, when I told people, hey, I'm getting veneers, or they saw me with veneers, they were like, oh my god, why did you waste all that time and money on Invisalign? Um, because my teeth were super fucking crooked. And if I had gone straight into veneers... Um, I would have had to have both my upper and te lower teeth done. My bite still would have been fucked. Um, and they would have had to shave down most of my teeth into tiny, tiny, tiny little spikes. Uh, because they were so, so crooked. Some of them were like almost fully rotated. So that's why I straightened my teeth before I got veneers. Because the prep work to have the veneers was less um, and once so once I went through the Invisalign which took 5,000 fucking years um, but I don't regret it um, I could really see the like uneven wear and tear of my teeth I had chips on my front teeth which is not unusual you know I'm 36 uh, it's not unusual to have a few chipped teeth um, and yeah, I I was like, yes, I still want to get veneers. Um, so yeah, uh, it's very expensive. I know you can get it cheaper elsewhere in the world, but I wasn't going to travel for it. And also I'm a, a little bit hesitant about that kind of thing. But I do know people who have traveled overseas to have their teeth done cheaper and they had very good work done so you know that that's an option for some people I would just say do your research make sure you're very confident about uh, the work that's being done um, it's yeah uh, I mean I'm really happy um, it's been a great confidence booster for me so I I would recommend it I mean it's not going to be for everyone Pe there's going to be people who can't afford it um, I would definitely recommend Invisalign, like that's still expensive, um, or even braces. I mean, if you can't handle the sort of braces, I would go Invisalign. But you you got to have um, a lot of a lot of discipline um, to make Invisalign work for you. 
Okay, I had people asking how the advent calendar search is going. Am I going to do a DIY advent calendar this year? So I am thinking, yeah, maybe I'll do a DIY advent calendar this year. If you guys enjoyed it last year, I'm happy to do it. I really, for me, it was more about like, you know, opening the calendar and then trying to use things up. That was, I really enjoyed that challenge. Um, so yes, I'm thinking I will do it this year. I have got an advent calendar. Um, oh, someone also asked me about my most recent purchase. So this will play in. Um, let's move this way actually. So you can see a little stack here. Um, the top one is not an advent calendar. It's my most recent purchase. It is from Lashify. Uh, so I'm keen to play with that. You might be able to tell what the one in the middle is. Harry Potter Lego. Uh, it wouldn't be a Christmas without it. And the bottom one is my advent cal my beauty advent calendar that I chose to purchase this year. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll keep it as a little surprise. Um, but can you see like this here? Can you see this? This is the cheekiest thing that Freya ever fucking did. Someone asked that question too. I think I mentioned that. I don't know. Um... Freya chewed it. She chewed it. It was 200 pounds. <laughs> so yeah, I have a major, major problem with that. Thanks, Freya. Love you so much. Come pick up your fucking dog. I'm sick of babysitting her. Stu and Natasha Denona. I need a nude lip crayon in Ilona. And I'll do a Lisa Eldridge affair <laughs> lip gloss. Um, actually, there we go. That's fitting. Um, I haven't had an affair. Don't worry. Um, people have been asking me about relationships and dating and stuff. Um, I'm not dating. We're in lockdown. It's not much I can do, really. Uh, when we're out of lockdown, so like, you know, early last year, uh, throughout, you know, holidays 2019, um, and then end of last year, early this year, um, I did, I dated a few people, uh, and I mean, you know, <laughs> it obviously didn't go anywhere. Um, I have been playing with the dating apps when we're out of lockdown, but I actually deleted them because I just oh, I think it's the worst possible way to date like I fucking can't stand it um and I've tried them a few times in the past and I've always felt that way uh, I don't know why I keep going back to them wow that sounds like a fucking toxic relationship doesn't it um yeah so I I deleted them and I I'm not gonna I'm just not gonna do it again. It's like such a fucking waste of time. People are so flaky and I can't, I cannot stand that. I just can't fucking stand it. Uh, and I'm kind of like, I would prefer to be single and happy than fucking pissed off by some knobhead, basically. So yeah, I, uh, I will wait until, hello kitty. What you doing, you cute thing? Um, I will wait until we're out of lockdown and hopefully mum is double vaxxed. And then I will try to get back out in the world. Um, but until then, uh, yeah, not much going on. Um, and I'm not, like, I don't, I don't really care. Um, I'm not really, like... I like being in a relationship. I love love. I really love love. Um, but also, I don't really put any... Um, I don't know how to really describe it. Like, I I can still live my life very happily without someone in it. Um, I, I don't need to be in a relationship. Um, and, yeah, I just... Like, I'm okay being single so you know there's that okay <laughs>
we're going back to lockdown. Uh, Black Paradise asked, uh, favourite thing about lockdown, cries in Auckland healthcare worker. Um, and uh, best way of coping with lockdowns and my favourite cocktail. So I did tell you my favourite cocktail. Um, look, uh, I guess the best thing about lockdown is um, no external pressure from the world. Um, I, I like that aspect of it. I do enjoy having time to like, you know, get all of the fucking jobs done around my house. Although I'm, I'm just going to say it straight up this year. I just didn't like, I didn't do shit. That's for many reasons. I've got like other shit going on and you know, sometimes life is just hard. Sometimes years are just bad. Um, and I think for me this year was just a bit meh. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I'm the kind of person, I try to just find the positive in everything. Um, and it, it is what it is. Like I'm, I don't want to stress and cry and be upset about, you know, being in lockdown. I'm okay. I'm making money. I've got a roof over my head. I'm still able to feed the family. Um, so I'm very lucky in that sense. I'm probably not even the best person to ask because there's probably people doing it a fuckload harder than me that do have really good coping mechanisms. And my coping mechanism when I'm stressed is just fucking watch some Netflix. <laughs> just tune out the world and watch some Netflix. Nalini from the Made Up Maiden asked, when are we catching up for a drink? When my mum fucking gets double vaxxed. Oh, people um, have been asking about my hair colour, which, I mean, you know, at the moment it's faded as fuck. Um, so, uh, I had a few questions. Do I do my own hair colouring? No, I do not. Um, that would be impossible since I usually have, like, multiple blended shades in my hair. Um... My hairdresser, Madeline, does my hair. Um, and I also had some people asking about, like, the colours. Like, how how do I choose the colours? Or they love my colour choices. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that, again, that's not really... I don't really choose the colours. Um, Madeline does. So sometimes I just give Madeline full, like, free reign. Fucking, you do what you want, babe. Um, and sometimes I will message her and be like, hey, I'm vibing this colour story. Can we do something? And she's like, yeah, of course. And then she, like, I let her take the reins with colour placement and blending and all of that jazz. So my next colour... Um, is happening early November. I'm getting my extensions put back in and I am going to refresh the colour and I'm going with like, you know, sunset-y colours. So reds and oranges and stuff like that. I did also have someone ask me if I would ever dye my hair um, black and red. They said it would look fire with like um, red eyeshadow, red makeup. Um, I have considered that, but I don't think I'll ever go black because black is like the hardest color to get out. And I don't want to have to grow that out. I don't want to have to try and bleach it out. Um, so yeah, I don't think I will. Black is just like probably one of those shades that I will, um, just stay away from because yeah, I don't want to have to deal with, you know, getting it out of my hair. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, like, rehydrate my face. Um, but I'm basically done. And I'm going to, uh, answer a couple more questions that I see. Um, 30 plus and pretty asked last time I went on a proper date, which I could have answered before. Um, it was earlier this year when we were not in lockdown it was probably like March or April maybe and it was nice it was fun it just um, not the one for me unfortunately um, uh, and oh 
that's right plants so i was going to answer this earlier um people were saying like will you do a plant wish list what plants are on your wish list blah 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 i i don't know if i should do a plant wish list because the plants that i want are all ridiculously expensive and i don't know <laughs> I don't want people to think badly of me. I'm not buying any fucking plants. Well, actually, I did buy a plant uh, recently. Why am I using my phone as a mirror? Stupid. Um, the last plant that I purchased was actually an Allocation Mellow. Now, I have owned a Mellow in the past, um, but I fucking... It was an itty-bitty tiny baby, and I underwatered it, and she dried up and died. So there was that. That was quite expensive. And, uh, oh, I just lifted my makeup really great. Um, and I recently saw that one of the Melbourne plant retailers were selling mellows. They were still expensive, but not as expensive as what I, um, paid originally. And, um, they were more established. So I got one of those. That was my last plant purchase and it's been a while like prior to that purchase since buying another one um yeah i would do a plant wish list maybe i will fuck it why not i can show you guys some of the things that i'm like chomping at the bit more i have had a so plant casualties um my variegated adansonii gave up the ghost my Aglionema pictum tricolor. It's one of my all-time favorite plants. Just fucking like survived all through winter and then as spring sort of came it was like I'm dying now. So yeah I'm pretty devastated about that. I am trying to resurrect it. Um, we will see what happens with that one but yeah. I mean when you own plants this is a risk you take. They're living things. They can die. Also um, it's not like you can, they're not like pets. You can't take them to a vet and go, I think there's something wrong with my pet. What do you think as a medical professional? Um, I have tried to ask other plant professionals about, you know, what is wrong with my plant and why is it dying? Um, and honestly, you just get the same question all the time. It could be too much light, not enough light. Not enough water, too much water. Probably needs a feed, you might have overfed it. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's unbelievable how, like, literally every single thing could be the issue, but you're never going to know what the issue is. So it's all just a matter of, like, trying to resurrect your plant. Um, so, yeah, those things happen with plants, and, you know, it is what it is, but... Um, yeah there are also plants on my wish list no we'll buy more in the future it, i'm just not doing it like right right now because um i'm essentially putting on three layers of highlight this is ridiculous i'm leaving all right guys so i'm gonna wrap that up there um thank you so much for asking questions there were some that were really fun really left a field really just like you know it, it's fun it's it's fun to talk about interesting questions um so i appreciate you taking the time to ask those questions i appreciate you taking the time to watch this video i will be back soon with another one i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one bye